Yes, there we go. Cool. Hello, everyone. Just going to be painting some random stuff today. I think the first thing I have is I got to do one episode of Bob Ross. I try to do one every day. So I'm going to do one Bob Ross episode. Just got to get everything queued up. And then just paint random stuff. I don't know, maybe two or three paintings a day. Let's see what happens. I said it down several times because you need such a. And this one is. Season 22, episode 5. It's a winter scene. It's got a lot of yellows, so it should be nice. Yellow ochre. A little bit of yellow ochre. I'm using Lucas Berlin oil paints today. Lucas Berlin. There's already liquid clear all over this thing. Liquid clear, uh, and that's Windsor and Newton brand because I don't, I don't have any extra Lucas Berlin oil. So it should work the same. Usually, all the water municipal paints use the same modified Lindsay oil. We're just kind of jiggling the brush around up here. Turn up the color. My canvas is a little saggy, so there might be a border around it, but that's okay. Not right, every canvas gets to you in good shape. a tub of dish soap and water. Works the same as, they're almost the same as odorless mineral spirits, but not as toxic. At least I hope it's not. It might be. I don't know. And I use a bunch of shop towels too. I've 
got Blizzard Crimson, Thalo Blue, lots of Crimson, a little bit of blue. And then stir it up. Looks nice. <clears throat> then we'll go grab some white. Maybe a little too dark. Maybe a little bit more white. A little bit more blue. Probably need a lot more for the background for putting in trees or something. Yeah, I'm putting in soft little trees in the background. For that, I have a two and a half inch Bill Alexander brush. I'll just tap the corner into the paint, and then we'll just drop in some little trees. Back. Sometimes I like this hidden around in the background because it makes it look like they're way far in the back. There's some distance in between them. And the reason you use the corner is because the bottom of the brush will blend out automatically for you. So you don't have to do anything to blend out the bottom of your trees. Sometimes he does this thing where he flicks paint thinner at the canvas. And if you do this with water mixed oils, it usually just gets everywhere and looks terrible. But if you use, let's see what I can use. I can use a little palette knife and some water, and then we'll see what we'll see what happens. I, last time I did this, it came out really weird, but or it didn't really do much anything. But we can try. I don't know. Is anything happening? I can't tell. Last time I did it, nothing really happened. So I wouldn't be surprised if nothing happens this time. Because it's a different, uh, different chemicals in the water mix oil than regular paint thinner. Use regular sienna, burnt sienna. We put this in all trees. We're going to darken these up with some black. Maybe there we go. That might look really good. Ooh. Look at that. That's very nice. And this is all so far. I've I like that. I like paintings that just use one brush. Let's clean it. I don't really know what this looks like anymore because all the colors are working on me. Ooh, he's adding some cadmium yellow. And this cadmium yellow that Lucas Berlin has is. Hansa yellow, dire, aerolite yellow, Hansa yellow, it's very, very weak, so like, you probably can't even see me hitting it on here, because it gets overtaken by the, the brown colors underneath it, but, it don't look too bad. It looks like 
like some grass in front. It's gorgeous. Now throw some Indian yellow. There we go. And I'll just wipe this off. I don't think I need to fully clean it with water. And you don't really want to clean your bristle brushes with water if you're using that water mix oil because they they puff out and they lose their shape and you have to get new brushes. I don't, like, I don't want you to have to get new brushes because that's expensive. So if you want a two inch brush that does work well with water, I just use Trilon brushes. They have my Home Depot. It's like fake synthetic bristles. Works pretty well. Or you can just do like I do and only clean the two and a half inch bristle brush at the end of the paint. That works too. Bob's in here putting, putting some branches and stuff. And you can use you can use a script liner. I like using the um, palette knife just because it kind of sticks out more. I already have enough trouble seeing the colors on the canvas, so it's better if I have something that sticks out a lot because then I don't have to strain myself. And these can go anyway, you just chop up and that's doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. As long as you don't go through <laughs> you don't want to go through the canvas then you'll be upset. Yeah. If you want like a really easy tree, just put water on the brush. And this will dry in the shape of a, a tree. That's sometimes I, I do that. One simple way of making trees in the background. And it'll dry. It'll dry up. The water will remove the paint or thin the paint out to the point where you can't see it. It all blends together. It looks, looks like a little trunk in the background. All right. But you can add some actual trees in here. Might as well. I used to struggle a lot with the trees, or the branches rather. The really small trees. My hands kind of shaky, um, but that actually ends up being a good thing. I found after doing a bunch of trees, you just have to you have to pay attention to how many branches you're putting on. Because a lot of trees, they don't have that many branches. And if they do have, if they do have some branches, they usually grow in pairs. looking at it right now you probably wouldn't be able to tell that this was going to be a winter painting but it will it'll end up as this one all right trying to decide i'll use this brush it works pretty good for laying in snow because it cuts through the paint on the bottom i wouldn't recommend it for clouds and stuff it works really really well for snow it just cuts right through whatever you want. Right now I'm just kind of pulling at an angle. That good, that's what shapes your uh, snowbanks. I feel like I might need a darker color down there first though. That's okay. I'll just smooth up the top first. Then we can do that. Uh, 
wish I could get rid of those lines, but once they're in there, they're kind of hard to get rid of. Let's get it. Let's pause Bob real quick. Because I need to take this blue color that I made, and I'm just going to lay in some shadows here. It's not yellow. There's still some yellow in the brush. Blue. blue for snow shadows. Makes it look a little colder. You're probably thinking, what is, what is going on? What is he doing? Oh, it looks like this is what Bob's got up there. He's got a bank here, goes all the way up. And then this over here is water. So that's just what I'm that's what I'm laying in real quick. Just some shadow colors. So now I can throw in the white on top. What's up, Marcelo? Good to see you. Just in time for the cabin. Sienna. And then you just pull. Looks like boards. You just pull down on it. Same on the side. There we go. Looks nice. Need 
need another paper towel here. I'm doing pretty good. I took the day off today. Just kind of relaxed. Ooh, 10 out of 10 cabin. Thank you. I gotta add some windows and doors though. Otherwise, you can't get in. The door that is. You don't want to come in through the window. I don't know what I'm talking about. it gets bigger as you come forward. That's all that matters. Just pull. Doop, 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 doop. There you go. Let's see. You want to throw more bushes in? You want purple bushes? I like purple bushes. Maybe some brown. What color does brown and purple give you? adding a tree. You gotta add a tree. <laughs> All right. Oh no, he's going right on the left side. Might cover up my other tree. I don't really like that tree. I don't know. You guys like that tree? I don't really like it. Not my favorite tree I've done. I'm just using a ivory black and burnt sienna here. There we go. Throw some white in there. 
on this tap on the side. Looks like a highlight. Sometimes I get too excited and I drop my brush when I'm doing this. Evergreens go up. They have the weird, weird branches that go up. I'll put some here. Maybe that one hangs out in front. Maybe let's pull some up there. Another one here. Uh, one there. That's good. Good enough. This one's done. Let's see. What do I want to paint next? Oh, I gotta sign it. I always forget. Oil script liner into a bright red. This is also called naphthol red. If you wanna learn about different paint colors, and then we'll just put a little signature here. And then move on to the next painting, I guess. I don't know how many paintings I'm going to do today. Can't really decide. Put the date 22. There we go. Good to go. Rinse that off. All right. Okay, now I just got to do some boring brush cleaning stuff. And then we'll move on to the next one. I'm streaming on what is this? Yeah, this is restream. It's kind of I don't know. It's really delayed. It makes stuff difficult. And it doesn't tell me like how many viewers I have or any, any useful stuff. So I have no idea if anyone's watching right now, but if you are, thanks for tuning in. I, I appreciate it. All right, clean off that brush. Rinse that. Bob have a video of Abraham Lincoln jousting George Bush <laughs> when they're both riding giraffes. I don't think he does. I also can't pay, paint people very well. It ends up as blobs. Or they end up as blobs. If I could paint people, I would I would definitely Dude, was it George Bush jousting Abe Lincoln? <laughs> that would be a good one. Uh Brushes clean. Those brushes are clean. I think we're good. Good on the brush cleaning brigade. There we go. Anybody want to look at it? Nice little painting. Not too bad. I'll hang it up on my wall over here. Hopefully they don't fall off. Sometimes they fall off. And that's a whole, whole mess. All right, that's clean. Now I just gotta scrape off the old paint. This is the sad part. 
could probably reuse it, but I have a problem where once I mix the colors, I can't tell what color I have. So then I end up painting paintings with like yellow sky or green skies and all kinds of stuff that people normally don't like, but I can't tell that it's wrong. It's a problem. It's a problem. But it's still fun. That's all that matters. Alright, wipe that off. Wipe that off. Wipe that off. There we go. Well, maybe I do a winter painting. Or a springtime painting. I guess it is almost spring if you do a springtime painting. I'm just down here cleaning off my palette. I didn't I didn't go away, I'm still here. Do a springtime painting. That'd be fun. Let me see if I got something. Yeah, we're good. Let's do. Ooh, that's a nice picture. If there's anything good to paint on like Instagram, just send it to me. I'll, I'll paint those too. That's where most of my inspiration's from. Alright, got that. I feel like I need something to actually set my paints up on. Because right now they're just in an old toolbox. And it is kind of annoying to sift through for paints. Season 2, Episode 4. Okay. What is that one? Shades of Grey. Ooh, that's a fun one. Yeah, I can do that one. Make sure I have the right colors. Liquid white, Prussian blue, titanium white, Van Dyke brown. On it. This one looks like it uses a ton of extra white paint. liquid white probably need some black too I'll leave it out in case there we go all right black white oh that's thalo blue come on Nathan get it together see being colorblind is just it's a pain it's a pain gotta read the labels all right Black, blue, white, brown. I'll we'll probably need a canvas too. <laughs> All right, let's see. Do, do, do. Go back here. Go back there. Oh, we got the theme song playing. Nice. I don't know if you can hear that, but always tune me up. I forget when he stopped doing that, but I always liked it. Oh, no, it doesn't. Alright. This is liquid white canvas. Yeah, this is the one, one of my favorites because it's simple colors. One third blue, two thirds brown. Oh, 
this is early on. He calls it magic white still. That's how you know it's an early one. All right, here we go. Brush and brush. Oh, wrong one. This is, I have a specific brush for putting on the liquid white because this it makes the brush sticky and you can't really use it for anything else if you're using the water mixable oils. I'm just putting on a bunch of the liquid white. It's uh, half linseed oil, half titanium white paint. They don't make it for water mixable oils. Nobody's made it yet. If somebody would make that, I would buy it. So. But nobody's done that yet. So I have to make it myself. Alright. This is a little crisscross, back and forth. That kind of motion. And you don't really have to worry about where the paint's going because once you're done, there's two ways to take it off. You can basically do what I'm doing here, except in between to clean your brush off every time. Or you can also do what I'm about to do and take a paper towel and wipe it off. So I'll drop that in here, take this, and rub, rub off all that extra, all this extra paint that you don't need. Paint that you need is already soaked into the canvas. You don't have to. You don't need anything that puts in. There we go. Good to go. I'll rinse this brush off in the water. Oh, just got water all over my shoe. That's no good. All right. Canvas is ready. The brushes are out, the paints are out. Although I don't think I mixed the color he used. He said brown and blue. Let me double check. Yep. All right, so we have this of brown, this of blue. Is this a dark blue? shouldn't have used the water to clean this one. Now it's gonna get frayed out. That's okay. I've gone a little overboard with these clouds here, but I don't know. I 
like the color I mixed up is gray, but that's all right. it and pull down to the right and that'll always give you a nice little roll. safe to say on here. background one he can he can have a little highlight too and he comes down come down in front there we go and then maybe one more up here and for these ones if you touch the canvas and then pull down and rotate that's what makes it get a little bigger is from the top makes it look a little more real This in white, I think. There we go. That's a nice color. This is for the shadows on the mountains. There we go. This mountain looks like one of Steve. Oh, thank you. That's the best compliment ever. You know, Steve's doing a... Um, He's doing a workshop. I saw it on Dana Jester's Instagram. He's doing a workshop in May, I think. It's not really advertised anywhere, but I don't know. I might go to it. It'd be cool. It'd be cool to meet Dana, Dana and Steve. Unless they're watching, and then I say hello, but <laughs> there's no way they're watching. <laughs> Like I need, I need a shadow in there so it sticks out a little bit. There we go. Just a little bit, not too much. Maybe some back here too. There we go. Now we're talking. We'll see. I I emailed the email that he posted on it, but I don't know if it's real or not. <laughs> You could never, you never tell anymore. There we go. All right. I might need more of the dark color. This is a 
big one. There's a big old mountain. Too, so that doesn't help matter to any. All right, here we go. Get the white out. This is going to look like Yosemite, maybe. Half dome. Two big peaks like he did, but whatever works. I'll put some shadow up here. There we go. Most of the dark paint off. You don't have to get all the paint off, but just enough so it doesn't distort whatever color you're trying to blend in. ones are just like hanging out up on the cliff. Sometimes you get those. If you go to Grand 
farther mountain. They have some trees that they've been blown on all year the same direction. So the half of the tree is, looks like it's been chopped off. That's pretty interesting. I can't tell where I've put trees anymore. <laughs> we gotta stop. But I can't tell I put one here. I don't like it. Front, we can put one right in here. Just one tree. One tree. I'm just socking in paint here. Probably thinking that looks like garbage. And it does. That's why you got the two inch brush. And you just pull it down. That turns it into a reflection. part about Lucas Brown paint is that you don't have to use any paint thinner or when you're doing the short lines because the white's already so thin that it just sticks. That's not really a good thing. But. There we go. I'm almost out of paper towels. Size in tree palette knives. <laughs> Trees with a palette knife. I'm just trying to mimic how Bill did it because I think he did it. The way he did it made it made more sense than the way Bob does it. And the way Bill does it is you start with a little bit out from where your previous branch was and then you just kind of go up from there, do a little swoosh. Oh, he did two of them? Are you kidding me? He did two of these things? <laughs> no, I don't know what's going on here. I'm just going to start jiggling the knife and hope for the best. Is that a tree? <laughs> Do we have a tree? I'm going to do that again. 
gonna go back to the fan brush. <laughs> and I'm gonna do them the, the way I know how. At least for now. of bushes. I always like doing bushes with the one inch brush. It's a lot easier for me for some reason. I don't know why. Here, put some down here. And pull it down. There we go. Back up here. White. And then I'm assuming we're going to put more over here. There we go. There we go. Use the rest of this white. That's a pretty good deal. Was that seven bucks? <laughs> Help cover the canvas. Let's see. I don't know what I should put in here. I feel like I should put something in there. What's Bob gonna do? He's probably gonna put more snow in there, I would assume. That's what he usually does. I really do not like those trees. <laughs> they look horrible. But now the question is, do I touch them up or leave them? I think I should just leave them. No risk of making them worse. My only advice that I have for painting is when you're doing these bushes and adding sticks, add the sticks where there is no white paint light ones. So like right in here, add some sticks there. It makes them look farther away. Oh, he's putting in a cabin. I should have known. What the heck? Roll right here. 
ready to go. I don't know if, yeah, it doesn't show up on the screen, but I have a huge stack of paper towel boxes over here, or shop towel boxes. So I just buy them in bulk, save some, save some dollars. It's also less of a headache to, because they go out of stock all the time. All right, where are we putting our cabin? We're gonna go this way. Maybe some of this way. Pull down to rip off that paint. And this is right on the right on the bar. So this might be a little rough, but that's okay. It's harder to paint on the bars because it's like super solid. It makes it tough. But we can make, we'll make it work. Alright. Outline this side. that off, get the white, pull down, so I got any more white up on this side. I always like going back over it once I've got the dark paint because it makes it look more more boards, I guess. Boardy, wooden. I don't know what to call it. Realistic, maybe. That's the word I'm looking for. Alright, I need a door. Just a little door. There we go. Now we go grab our brush with the white. Actually, let's see. What do I want to do here? I'm going to add some bushes around them. Because it's so close to the edge, might as well. You know. There we go. Push them up on the side. It's all growed up in the weeds. Good. I think it might be done. Not sure where I'm going to sign it though. Oh, he's got another tree in there. Do I want to throw a tree in? Mm, maybe. I don't know. I think we're good with this one. It came out a lot better than the last one I did. Or the last last time I painted this one, I think it was. What was that, 2020? December 2020? It's been a while. Because now I'm on season 22. It's like 300 paintings. I think I'd be done done with all of them by June, maybe. All the Bob Ross paintings. Definitely been improving, so that's good. Alright. Now we just clean off the brushes again. I feel like I should sign it. I don't know where to sign it. Might need to clean out the clean out my bucket too, but 
just not really cleaning my brushes anymore. Oh well. Off, wipe that off. Can't tell, is that out of focus? Maybe. Alright. <laughs> right. That's tier, let's go. Oh. Or should I sign it in? I guess white. I don't really have that many options here. Maybe some white paint. Mm. I'll sign it over here this time. I never sign over here. Keep it subtle so no one can tell. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I always put the year on it. People seem to like that. I don't stuff or giving me feedback on Etsy. I like that you put the dates on it. That's cool. Could just put anything on it. But whatever. Alright. We did that. We did that. Clean off the old easel. I really like dark stormy clouds like that. That was really nice. It's a nice color for Nice color for uh, storm clouds. Those trees, though, ugh, gross. Gross trees. Where am I going to hang this? Oh, I feel like John Travolta. Where am I? <laughs> I'll put it up over here. I have to find another spot for the painting. There we go. All right. That's good. That's good. Wipe this canvas off. This is something I don't, I forget to do sometimes, and then it always bites me. If you don't clean your paint off of your canvas or your easel, inevitably pick it up and put it into the next painting you have and then it could ruin it so it's something to be careful if you're trying to paint and I hope that everybody does it's always fun I always enjoy it oh, all right I'm gonna clean off the old palette again I still have some good white paint on there so I might try to scrape around it and I definitely have some good yellow paint that I didn't use Work around that. Oh, I got some blue there too. Halo blue. That's nice. Alright, scrape that off, scrape that off. Wipe that there. Alright. Is there anybody still in the chat? Agnarok still here? I really wish Restream would tell me. I think you might have to pay for to get the viewers count. around around my good colors because I don't want to mess up the good colors and I have to squeeze out more paint. It's always a pain. There we go. Alright. Which 
which one do we do now? I might actually paint. I'm going to try to do one from this place called Katie's Cove. I don't know if anyone's been there, but it's really nice. They have like a Katie's Cove loop. It's a nice place to go if you're looking for a weekend adventure. All right. Close that out. I just got to figure out what colors I want to use. I want to use phthalo blue, some white we already got, brown, sap green. That's a good color. Sap green is a good color. I like. And if you're mixing colors, sap green is phthalo blue and yellow. And sometimes dark sienna they throw in there, but usually just phthalo, phthalo blue and some yellow. That would get that'll get you sap green. Alright, we got the white, we got that, we got that. Oh, that's not good. Just drop my alizarin crimson into my sap green. This does happen a lot. I'm glad my brother got me a, he bought me a, uh, this apron. But I drop paints and brushes all the time and they get all over my clothes. And they usually stain your clothes. If you are, if you have painted before, you know what I'm talking about. You'll stain it and it won't come out. No matter what you use, you'll get the worst stains in your clothes. So I'm very glad that he got me an apron. I was thinking about buying one for a long time, but I never did. Couldn't find a good one, but he got me a good one. It's called Vulcan. Vulcan Wear. All right, we've got some phthalo green, sap green, Van Dyke brown, phthalo blue, cad yellow, alizarin crimson, Indian yellow. This is actually a uh, diarylide yellow is like dark Hansa yellow, and that's what water mixable companies usually use for their Indian yellow or variant of it. I think this one's called cadmium yellow deep. Alright, we got some brown, some dark sienna, burnt sienna. Do I need Prussian blue? I don't think I need Prussian blue. Gonna use some black paint here. I'm just gonna use all the colors. Some yellow ochre. There we go. Look at all that. This is gonna be fun. Ready to go, ready to go. Let's cut that up. Let's pull this over here. Pull that up over there. Alright, here we go. Ooh, I need a canvas. Come on, come on, buddy. Put out three canvases today. Because I wanted to do three paintings. This is the last one. All right, here we go. This is an original. I don't paint originals pretty much ever. I mean, I do. I do sometimes, but very rare. So this is the first one I've done on stream. We'll see how it goes. All right, we need liquid white or liquid clear. Let's see. I'll do liquid white on this one. Might look nice. Probably need to make some more. So I'm running a little low on it. But when I'm applying liquid white, I just go around the circle, tapping. And then once I have it, and I start going with the X strokes. I think if you've watched the last painting I did, you'll also see me applying liquid white. Same process every time. After I've applied it, I'll take it off with a paper towel. But here it's just little X strokes back and forth all the way around. So you've covered at least the majority of the canvas. Sometimes like you'll miss the bottoms here. That's not too bad. That's not a big deal. I don't want to worry about it. Right, some big strokes across, I just want to evens it out. So you don't big blobs of it in there. I usually do this twice up and down. Good to go. Alright. I'll 
use some. Rinse this off real quick. Wipe that there. Push that in. Give it a shake. All right. This brush is good to go. Also, if anyone has good music to play that I can play without getting banned, I would appreciate it. Alright. We gotta wipe it off. You can tell how long I've been paying in a day based on how much I start forgetting. Just wiping off the excess white. Again, the oil and the white paint that you need is soaked into the canvas already by the time you get to this point. So wiping it off is it's helping yourself. You can do the same thing with the brush. All right, let's see. I'm going to do some nice little clouds. So well, let's start with the sky. Let's start with a nice sky. I want a phthalo blue sky. That's always good. Start with phthalo blue. Just go back and forth. I usually flip the brush over. Sometimes I'll just go in straight at an angle and get a big blob on it. But whatever works. I don't want much blue in this one. I actually kind of want more red tones, maybe. Actually, it looks like it has a. Still has that spot in there. I can fix that pretty quick, though. Let's take some alizarin crimson on the fan brush. Some blue, more crimson, and then just throw in a dark, dark cloud here. cloud down there. Doesn't matter. We can do something up there too. Maybe we'll have another one up here. Some stringy clouds. There we go. Something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. Let me take this brush again. Wind out the bottoms. Just in between.
really want a bright spot in here. It's just, I like having bright spots in my skies. I'll take some white and a very small amount of cat, or this is yellow ochre. A little bit of that. And then what are we doing here? Throw in, let's just brighten up this ridge. Like maybe, maybe this cloud is really bright, and then behind it is very, very dark. Something like that. And then we can brighten up the bottoms of these shadows that we put in up there. Just add some light in. Maybe we have some spots of light. Just spots. They don't have to be. They have to be everywhere. Just put some light in the dark. There we go. All right. Now I'll wipe off this. Look at like this. Looks like nothing. This looks like a bunch of blobs. You'd be right. Sky. All right. Blowing these out just a little bit more. We got some shrinks in. There you go. Now we're gonna add in some mountains. We're gonna do them an easy way, I guess you would say. Maybe not easy, but the lazy way. Go back into this blue color. These are in the K's code, it is in the Blue Ridge Mountains, so if you've been up there, make all the mountains blue. Alright, here we go. I don't know if this will be dark enough. Probably won't be able to see these, and that might be good. Yeah, see, because I made those too dark. That's okay. Let me just add some more dark paint. There we go. mountains, I always just pull some shape, and that's what ends up making the shapes of your mountains. Instead of using the two inch brush, like with the palette knife, and you pull it down, it, it all just looks the same, one big flat color, like this. And pull this down, and you get these little predefined ridges in there, look really nice. in the background. We want to add a little bit of green to those. I think so. Let's add some green. So I already got this blue color. I'll add some yellow to it. Make a nice green color. That's what Bill Alexander says. The nice green color. Alright. And then just have a few patches of green. Not too many. And 
This might go over some of the stuff we've already done, but we just want like a little bit of green, not the whole thing. Make it look like there's some trees back here, but we don't really know what kind of trees. Some trees back there they're doing stuff i want to come a little bit closer when you come closer you get darker so we will grab let's see let's grab some sap green maybe some phthalo green a little bit of both that make a nice color and then we're gonna have like a trail do some fences across there so let's actually let's bring these up Putting some trees right in the middle. They're a little bit closer. So I need to beat it a little darker. So I had some Van Dyke Brown in there too. That's good. That's good. Look at that. Alright, now with these, you pull up. You pull up, and they look like really far away pine trees. some highlights in there farther back just some like little tiny trees like more defined trees not super well defined but just a little bit more just a couple not too many and one there so let's, let's just do them all the way across because they look nice i like these big bushy trees and i'm just going back and forth between thalo green sap green Once I'm done, I'm gonna, I'll highlight these. And I am covering up a lot of the, a lot of the colors I already put in there, but that's okay. They don't have to be perfect. All right, now let's blend these out on the bottom. And then we'll take this, dip in liquid white, brush it out here, and then grab some sap green with Cad yellow. This is actually Hansa yellow. Like a nice bright green. Oof, springtime trees. They're just hanging out here in the background. Enjoying the springtime bloom. Birds flying. They're just having a good time. Oh, look at that. That one came out really good. Look at these. Alright, alright. Getting too excited here with these background trees, but that's okay. throwing some grass color and then we come even closer let's just use straight yellow and we're gonna throw in grass just lots and lots of grass going to do this all the way across or all the way down I should say not all the way across and you just tap straight in and makes it look like little grass there we go something like that lovely alright so we got our little field here trees in the background, trees up the side, and what do we want to add in? I wanted a fence, I wanted to add in a fence, so let's add in a fence. We're going to need lots of brown, actually we can just combine all these greens, I'll make a nice brown color. I want these to be 
look like they're kind of close because if you've been in Cage Cove, they have a fence that runs along the whole trail, the whole drive through, drive driveway. And it just looks really nice. So these are gonna be right up close, big, big posts. So we're gonna start all the way over here, right at the bottom. And we're just gonna put one in here, one in here. And we can extend these so they don't have to look perfect up front. using the palette knife for these because it doesn't leave brush strokes. When you have brush strokes I feel like it just kind of ruins your what you're trying to do with fences. And fences are always or pieces of wood are always usually straight. So. Alright, here we go. And I'm just filling in the bottoms. Making them look nice. There we go. Put that one. Good. We can take out some more paint. If we want, I don't know if I want to take out my paint. I can. Probably wouldn't hurt anything. We go straight from the bottom and go up. I actually remove a lot of the excess paint. It makes it easier to uh, highlight the fence posts without ruining them. There you go. See, they are good. All right, so we've got that many fence posts. We need some highlights on them, so let's take yellow ochre, sienna, mix that up. Makes a nice wood color, maybe some more sienna. And don't thoroughly mix that. You want it to look kind of like wood, kind of like that. That's a good color. All right, now we're just gonna lay in some little highlights here. Just touch, pull. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be realistic, whatever it makes you happy. All right, pull straight down some spots. Pull, this one's gonna look really nice up front. There we go. Got some nice, nice little line of fences here. Take the brush we used to make the grass, and we're just gonna tap it in the bottom. Basically cover up the, the foot or feet, whatever Bob says. There we go. Look at that, nice little, line of fence and then we're going to take the knife we're going to go in here clean it off and we're going to throw in a little wire because they use wire fences they're just little wire fences um, for that i already have a liquid light here so i can use that that's pretty good for making uh, actually that'll work that'll work take the pallet knife twist to the right you get a little roll easy peasy and we're just gonna All the way through to the end. There we go. I need some more paint there, but maybe if I start from this side, that would work better. Yeah. And if you need more paint, don't don't be scared to get more. farmer's way of putting up fences. They have three wires. There we go. One more here. One more there. Good to go. Nice little fence. And then, I don't know. The sun's coming from that way. There would be a shadow behind them, but I didn't add it in because I wasn't thinking about it. But maybe we can add in some more grass up here. So it looks a little closer. And I had extra paint anyway, so. Brush up the little bottoms, because you usually can't mow right up to the fence posts. Alright, there we go. Pulling up just a little bit here and there. And then 
rinse this brush off. I think we're about done. That was a pretty fast one. I don't know how long it took, actually, but it's a pretty fast painting. Um, do I want to add anything else? Nah. Well, I can add. I guess I can add some little grass here and there because I got some Indian yellow and stuff left over. Longer grass, long hair grass, rye grass, maybe is the word. to get used to the brush. Normally I use the Kevin Hill script liner, but I switched to this Bill Alexander one. Alright. I think that's good enough. I think it came out pretty good. I want to touch this up, just remove some of this extra paint. And move it over here. I don't know. It just looked a little empty. That's done. Let's grab this. Throw on a little signature. And then we'll call it a day. Thanks for everybody for watching. I appreciate it. It's always nice to have people stop in, say hi. I really hope that you guys, uh, everybody paints at some point. It's very, it's one of my favorite things to do now. Alright, so there you have it. I'll just call this one Katie's Cove at Spring. Because that's what it was. Alright. And I think with that, we'll take this painting down and we'll call it a day. It's been really fun, everybody. But, yeah. Thanks for watching. You're appreciated. Have a good day. Enjoy the weekend. Have fun. Bye-bye.